sort of, this is mostly just smallmouth on Great Lakes. This can apply to other lakes as well, but in the fall time, this is um, one of the main things that smallmouth look towards. So I'll talk about where to look first. So there's things called reefs and shoals out on the Great Lakes. They mostly are just humps near deep water, sort of. Um, these are sort of what they look like on avionics. So you can see that the water comes up to about 11 feet and then it drops off to like 25. Some of them have little steeper breaks or higher humps. This one comes up to 11, a couple of them come up to eight on that one. Uh, so that's sort of what you wanna look for. The main key is you wanna be around deep water. So those fish aren't gonna necessarily be in the deep water, but they're gonna be right next to it. So they might be on this 11 feet of water, but once the water temp gets really low, then they'll drop off to this 30 feet and then over here once it heads into winter. Um, like I said, they're sort of like staging areas, so they're just getting ready to move out to the, their wintering holes. They're not really getting there yet, but they're feeding up for winter. Um, you also can look for man-made things, like such as these walls that come out of rivers or things like that. Uh, the fish like to set up on that because bait fish get pushed up on there. There's tons of rock and uh, man-made structure that they like to sit on. And then the main thing is contour lines. Uh, I use Navionics and some hummingbirds units have Lake Master chips as well. Uh, but if you don't have any uh, grass or anything that you can do that, you can also go on the Navy on its website. They have a free like chip and it just shows, you can go on your computer and look at it all and figure out where you might want to fish on those as well. And then once you go out, you can actually go to those areas and try and fish them. Uh, so the main thing to look for. Uh, so once you figure out where you might want to fish, like those, those little humps, then you go oh, out to the... You have those GPS, right? Yeah, that's, my, I, that's a Helix 12 that I have. And uh, so then you're gonna go out to these areas and then you're gonna, the main thing is you wanna search around. Uh, so you wanna let electronics be your friend. Um, on the Great Lakes, there's so much water that it's sort of impossible to just go out and fish. You sort of have to kind of target specific areas. So the main thing is rocky areas. Um, does anyone know what zebra mussels are? Yeah, I so, hate those when those They're a pain in the butt for sure. Um, they are. They're an invasive species and they're actually in most Great Lakes or I believe all of them. Um, they, they're like tiny zebra mussels. They're just mussels that stick to the bottom. They stick to rock and everything like that. And they pretty much have covered all of the Great Lakes on the bottom. So when you're fishing, they're really sharp. So you might have to upsize your line a little bit and things like that. Uh, so like I said, you want to search around. So drive around these humps and keep looking. I use um, 2D most of the time and then down scan. And then sometimes I'll also use side imaging. So side imaging, I mostly use just to find rock, but you can also find fish. Um, if you look hard enough, you can see that these are fish here, and then those are rocks. Um, a main way to tell is sometimes you can see like the fish structure, it actually looks like a fish. Other times you can actually see the fish, and then behind it will be a shadow because the fish doesn't sit on the bottom, so you'll get the reflection of the fish and then the reflection of the shadow as well. Uh, this is what they look like on 2D. They're mostly squiggles, um, and then on down scan, they pretty much just like look like dots. Uh, lots of other fish can look like this, but small. the electronics that we have nowadays, they're sort of realized. Pricey. What, yeah, they're pricey. They're very pricey. But they, they're so smart that they can actually detect like sort of what kind of species they are. So they'll kind of map it out, determine like by the size of the fish and the shape of it. Uh, fish movements and thoughts. So they, just like us, we all know winter's coming. Uh, you can feel it in the air, and they can feel it in the water temperature. Uh, so as the water temperature decreases, their metabolisms increase. Uh, so they start going on the feed bait, and they try, want to try and feed up for winter, so in the winter time they can stay healthy. Uh, this is sort of a map of like what they might be doing during different water temps. So when the water temp hits like 55, they'll start thinking about, they can feel the water temp dropping and they'll start thinking about going to those humps and shoals uh, to start feeding up. And then once the water temp hits like 50 to 52, they will start um, feeding 24 seven as much as they can. They just keep eating no matter what. Even they're, they're like cold. me. Yeah, <laughs> they're like me too. And then uh, once the water temp drops, so last weekend I was out and it was 51 and then the next day it was 49. So we're right in this range right now and then once it hits 49 to 45, they'll keep feeding up, but they also want to start finding deeper water. So you might find them a little deeper where, as before, you might have found them in 20 feet of water. They might be in 30 to 40 feet of water now. And uh, 
The reason they do this is because in the winter they're mostly dormant. Uh, they go in deep water and sit there. They actually do eat a lot more than people um, tend to believe they eat in the winter. But in the fall is when they feed up and make sure they're all healthy so they can survive through the winter and the cold months. Uh, on the Great Lakes, forage is very different. Um, I've caught gobies. Yeah, who's heard of gobies before? You have to kill them. Yeah, yeah, you should. Uh, they're also an invasive species. I believe they came from Asia or something like that. Uh, so this is what they look like. They're little, they just look like little males, probably three to five inches. And the smallies absolutely love them. And they I are- use them for bait. Yeah, you could. They're, us, they're pretty much everywhere. And uh, the smallies like them because they're just easy prey and they're, they're easy to eat, just like bait fish and minnows. So gobies are our main thing in the fall. That normally only um, pertains to Great Lakes because they're only in the Great Lakes. Um, so if you're fishing in Lynn Lakes, you probably won't be trying to imitate goby style presentations. Uh, but then they also feed on bait fish and minnows. Uh, the most of the reason is because they're schools of bait and they, um, it's an easy meal for them. So the school of bait will be up top and then the smallies will be below and then when they're ready to feed, they just come up and eat all the bait they want. Uh, so those are the two staples for fall in the Great Lakes. And then, so your baits and techniques are pretty much gonna be the same, um, whereas like where you fish wherever you wanna fish. But the main thing is in the Great Lakes, it's usually deeper, um, especially for smallies. They like to sit in a little deeper water. So your spinner baits, swim baits, Alabama rigs, jerk baits, blade baits will all apply. Uh, the main thing with like a spinner bait and a swim bait is you might have to go do, like a spinner bait might have to be a three quarter and a swim bait might have to be a half ounce, whereas before you might have used a three ace or a half ounce for a spinner bait. Um, blade baits also work very well. Um, they work better more towards the end of the fall, so when the water's getting a little colder. And they also work if you vert vertically jig them, sort of like Joey does, probably does for walleyes. Uh, so if you mark some fish on your draft and they're right below you, you can just drop your blade bait down and get it to the bottom and then just keep popping it slowly. And that's a great way to entice them to bite. Um, some other baits such as Ned rates and drop shots or even uh, big tubes will work as well. Um, mostly that's just because they still imitate gobies. Uh, they're not as fast moving, which in the fall you usually want to use a reaction bait because the fish are on the move and they're always hunting for uh, food, whereas like in the summer they're just sitting on the bottom waiting for an easy meal. Uh, but you can also use drop shots and stuff like that. Even worms or like goby style baits will work as well. Um, and like I said before, keep zebra mussels in mind. You might have to upsize your line. Uh, like. A drop shot, you might have to go to, I don't know, 17 or 15 pound line, whereas before you might use 6 to 8 pound line. How big are all those guys? Those are like uh, 2 to 3 pounds. No big, big. no big ones there. But. And then uh, you also want to keep your bait in the strike zone. The main thing is because it's so deep that it's hard to keep your baits in the strike zone, so you might either have to go to a deeper diving jerk bait or you have to figure out a way to make longer casts. Um, so you can do this by either downsizing your line, which sort of goes against the premise of zebra mussels, so you have to do a little give and take there. Uh, or you can even, even put uh, some, like on jerk baits, you can put small weights, lead weights on, on the back of them, so they dive a little deeper. And the big thing is, when, who, who does not have a boat to fish on the Great Lakes? Probably most of us, right? Yeah. Mine comes in one stop. Yeah, it's a little I rough. Kayak. So uh, the Great Lakes can be known for big winds and it can be really tough. Um, lots of bass fishermen fish on Great Lakes. Uh, they do it and I don't know how they do it sometimes, but they find a way to do it. Uh, I definitely, my dad has a Ranger walleye boat, so I feel safe in that. But um, the main thing is if the weather's too bad, you can't go out. That's the simple thing about it. Or you can go out, you just gotta be picky about your choices. So being prepared, um, watch the weather and find areas to hide. So this is a main one. If you're out on the Great Lakes and you got a couple spots that you're used to, um, you might not be able to fish those. So take a look at the wind and determine what the wind is, how, how, what direction it's going, how fast it's going. Maybe you can sneak around a bay or a corner or a bridge piling or a man-made wall or something like that and find some fish. Uh, that's a great way to try new things and you might even find the mega school fish that way. And then like I said, Control what you can control, so have everything ready that you need for big water, life jackets, everything like that. Um, 
some things that you can do in the wind, sometimes you might not even be able to fish a spot effectively, so you might have to drift. Um, bass fishing, it's not easy to drift because we aren't usually used to it, but sometimes if you're fishing a big area and there's fish everywhere, it's actually um, a good technique to do that. So either you can just let the boat take the wind or go with the wind and you can throw your bait out such as a tube and just drain it on the bottom or you can use the wind to your advantage and cast a, with the wind so you make longer cast so you can throw a jerk bait and it get, can get down deeper. Um, or if you're lucky enough you can have power poles or stuff like that and use drift paddles or you can buy drift sacks. Those are a little, uh, I don't know, you could call them parachutes but they just you time your boat and you oh, throw them in the water. You see them? Man. Yeah. You time your boat and you throw them in the water and they just sort of slow you down a little bit. The, they open up in the water and the water just pushes through it so it slows the boat down a it's little bit. It's like skis. Yeah, exactly. It's like skis. Um, and then, like I said, wind direction. So maybe the main thing is keep an eye on the weather and make sure that you know where you're going. So if the weather is coming out of the sort northwest, you might have to fish an area behind something or something like that. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? What do you got, Matt? You ever use those dark sleeper baits? Oh yeah, I actually have one. I haven't uh, used it a ton, but uh, that is a great bait because it actually, I mean, it's practically made for a goby. They make other colors, such as like a blue or something like that, but they look exactly like a goby and they work very well because they actually have a, I don't know, it's like a, put, not a, not a weed guard, but it covers the, weed, the hook. So you're able to fish it wherever you want, and uh, they, I think they make them up to a one ounce, so you can fish in deep water as well. Uh, swim baits, all that kind of stuff is perfect for that because it just imitates bait fish, gobies, everything like that. Those are some baby dogs. Yeah, th these two were uh, these two were pretty big. This was our five fish. Um, this was Sunday actually. Uh, these were our biggest five fish. It was just under 30 pounds at 29 pounds. We had a six and a half pounder. So. That goes to show you what you can uh, produce out on the Great Lakes. Do you um, have any pitch all of that six pounder? I, I believe I do. My dad caught the six pounder, so I have to. Send me it. I can, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's about it. Anyone else got any questions? Do you like this idea, the seminar idea? Yeah. Any uh, other ideas? I know Max was thinking about doing one. I'm I'll all do it once too, man. Do you want to do one? Oh, 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 oh,